<laughs> Coraline Jones always dreamed of finding a better world. I did know that Corna was going to make a return to theaters, but what I didn't know was how well it's going to do as a re-release and it's doing so well. Also, Inside Out 2 just keeps moving up in the top 10 list of movies of all time. It just right now surpassed Jurassic World to become the eighth movie of all time. I did predict that it will be around 10 to 6. I don't think he has the legs or the oomph to actually get into that top five list. But I could be wrong. And the longer they keep it in theaters, there might be a chance that it can reach that level. But I am still surprised that people are still watching it in theaters. But I get it. I love going to theaters to get that movie feeling to actually watch a movie. But it has to be a really good moody movie to actually do that for. And Inside Out 2 is a good movie to actually go see in theaters. While Tim Burns' Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice scared up the biggest showing of the weekend, conjuring a $145.4 million global opening and scoring number one opens in 40 markets, animated favorites are still making box office waves, including Inside Out 2 and of course now Coraline, who is doing well or what is or it is doing well. I'm not a big fan of Coraline, but it's not, but that's neither here nor there. Riley, how was camp? Come on, let's stay up on ah! oh. It was good. She goes away for three days and all we get is good? She goes away for three days and all we get is good? Sharing a kinship with a Burns sequel, which Features a return to handcrafted stop motion effects in homage to the original. Lake Hayes stop motion darling Coraline continues to draw crowds with its 15th anniversary re-release since its re-release re -release on August 15th. The 3D remastered film has garnered over 15 million at the global box office through this weekend. I think it's because maybe of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, the sequel to Beetlejuice that could be causing this type of reaction to actually see Coraline again. You have two movies, you got two Tim Burton movies at the same time in theaters. And once you go watch Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and then you have that Tim Burton feeling, maybe you go in and decide, oh, well, we already watched Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Why not watch a more kid-friendly movie like Coraline? Even though I don't think it's more kid-friendly because you have a mother that is trying to kill Coraline to actually steal her soul and prolong her life. But that's neither here or there. Weekend numbers from Comscore for Coraline show an additional $1,257,968. In domestic box office for a cumulative of 32.1 million dollars across international markets the film picked up an additional 565 thousand dollars for the weekend for an overseas total of 18.3 million dollars and a global sum of 50.4 million dollars in many territories the 15th anniversary re-release exceeded the original 2009 box office. The film's return is presented by Fathom and Trafalgar, releasing and ranks in the top 50 releases of 2024 per box office mojo. So it is the number 50th, re -re not re-release, but release of 2024. So it's doing well for a re-release. And it's doing way much better than the actual release date of Coraline. But like I said, it could be the Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice movie that is causing this type of reaction. But I don't know how long. You know what? Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice just came out last weekend or this, this past weekend. So it's been doing so well 
even before that, but it might be that Tim Burton, like, feeling that you actually want to go watch before you actually watch Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. So it could be the effect of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice still. But you still have two movies out there. Also, it's been there for a couple of weekends already, so that could be a reason. For, I think, Disney, if they actually want to do a re-release, they should do it the way that they're doing Coraline and just not make it one day and make it like at least oh like four weeks for that and then re-release it every 30 maybe every 15 depending on how long you want to keep it and then also making the quality that it is at that time so you gotta actually make it into a better quality than when you were actually released it and i think that's what disney does but who knows what Disney does with their re-releases, especially the Lion King, because they, they did re-release the Lion King a couple of, I think, months back, and there was somebody in the comment section saying, oh man, I should have known, it looks like they didn't market it, that could be a reason, they literally market this movie though, the people that actually were talking about this, they this has been in the talks for a very long time. Every time I did research for articles to talk about or topics to talk about, this would always show up on my researches. This movie, Coraline, like, oh, this is gonna, uh, there's gonna be a re-release, there's gonna be a release, re-release. So it's been marketing, marketed a lot. Who knows if actually Disney does a good job at marketing their re-releases. They could have gotten way more people to watch their re-releases, especially The Lion King. A very popular movie. Meanwhile, the year's shiny new record-smashing CG blockbuster Inside Out 2 is now at $1.67.1 billion, overtaking Jurassic World as, as the eighth highest grossing film of all time. The Pixar sequel international total has also landed the film on that all-time top 10 chart with 1.023 billion dollars so it's doing not only doing well worldwide but also do well internationally but not so well maybe in domestically maybe he hasn't done it well who knows <laughs> but inside out three is going to have a tough competition to beat out the thing is, can Pixar make a better story than Inside Out 2? Not only that, but can it even beat Frozen 3? Can Inside Out 3 beat out Frozen 3? That's the thing. That is like Disney's most anticipated movie coming out. Oh, of course, you got Moana 2. Moana 2 is another one that people are waiting to come out, but Frozen 3 is... When, when that got announced, I guess a lot of people were excited to actually know that this movie's coming out. And that movie would probably beat out Inside Out 2. For, but it depends on if Disney decides to keep it for however long it wants it. Like, if Disney wants to do what Pixar said that it wanted to do with Inside Out 2... And that is to have it in theaters for over 100 days, or I think 100 days. That's what Pixar said for Inside Out 2. Which they probably would do for Inside Out 3. But we have no news of Inside Out 3. But everybody is predicting that there will be an Inside Out 3. Because maybe uh, Pete Doctor did say, maybe on an interview, that there will probably be a Inside Out 3. But who knows if that actually comes out. That's probably like, let's say, three, four years down the road that we're going to get that information. Who knows? It's going to be a tough competition out there. As the top grossing animated feature of all time, as well as the biggest film of the year across worldwide, domestic and international charts, Inside Out 2 has worked tag team with the number two movie Marvel's Deadpool and Wolverine to make Disney the first studio to hit 4 billion in global box office takes in 2024 yeah 
So they're the ones that are making Disney the money. Because uh, I did get a comment in one of my latest videos about somebody saying, well, Disney's making a comeback. Like, no, that's Pixar right there. I credit these accomplishments, not to Disney, even though they fall in the Disney umbrella. I give credit to um, Pixar and then Ryan Reynolds. This has already been in the works, this Deadpool and Wolverine. Even before Disney bought out maybe 20th Century Fox. Fox. So I credit this success with Ryan Reynolds and Pixar. I don't give credit to Disney. Because if Disney had their hand in it, I think Disney would have messed it up. The entire story, in my opinion. But that's my opinion. So I don't think Disney's making a comeback. Unless Frozen 3 does well. Unless Frozen 3 does well, then yeah, maybe. They had to make a whole lot of changes. A whole lot in order for them to actually make a comeback. They literally had to make a whole lot of changes on every studio that they own. From 20th Century Fox, well, 20th Century Fox is doing a little bit better than anything. It hasn't literally been touched by Disney yet since they just got it. So who knows what they would do with 20th, 20th Century Fox. Like who would actually be in charge of that studio? So they own Lucas Films, Marvel Studios, Pixar, and now 20th Century Fox. Depending on who they put there at the top of 20th Century Fox will determine like if Disney is making a comeback. It would have been so amazing if they actually got rid of the people that, that are in charge of their other studios right now. Except for maybe Peacock Tour. Uh, Pixar, they should leave it alone. Even though Pixar did have a couple of flops uh, prior to Inside Out 2. That could be because maybe Disney got a little bit involved, but who knows. Let us know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace out.